Jeremiah chapter 20. Now, Persher, and sometimes, you know, we don't get the names correct. Anybody's going to pick up, well, you didn't say his name correct. Okay, we'll open up First Chronicles, and you just begin to start reading for us. Three chapters. I'll let you read three chapters, three chapters a day of First Chronicles, and we'll see how well you do. It's like I challenge somebody in the Greek. Okay? You pick any New Testament book, and all I want you to do is read one entire chapter. One chapter. You can take the shortest chapter in, in, in the New Testament. I want you to read the entire thing in the Greek. Now, Pastor, the son of Immer, the priest. Now, remember, if you go back to Jeremiah chapter 1, real quick, verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Antioch. So when we're talking about, back in chapter 20, when, we're, when we talk about the priests in Jeremiah, we are looking at a kinship. A, a kinship that runs all the way back to Aaron. Now remember, all priests are Levites. But not all Levites are priests. The priests had to be of the family of Aaron. And he had three boys, and I forget their names. And so when we look at priests, and we know Jeremiah is a priest. And what forms Jeremiah did, you, you probably maybe run the genealogy. And he lived... <clears throat> And one, now, the Levites did not get their own territory, their own inheritance. They got an inheritance amongst the children of Israel. Jeremiah is living in one of the Levitical cities. Now, Jeremiah, in his life, the last couple of chapters, we have seen, he has been called to go to the temple, at the gate of the temple, and preach to priests that are his family and his kinship. It's not, well, go to a foreign field, Jeremiah. Like uh, Jonah going to the Ninevites. That's not what it is. And when you remember that, you remember that Jesus a couple times in the gospel preached in his own hometown. And that he gave an illustration of two Gentiles of all the J Jewish, the widow that helped Elijah and Naaman, the Gentile, with his leprosy, and they were about to take Jesus to the brow of the hill and kill him. And that the hometown of Jesus came to the conclusion, who on earth do you think you are? You're the son of Mary and Joseph. Don't you come in here and tell us. And Jeremiah being a type of Jesus. Hey, Jeremiah, we know who you are. You're of our our family. You are of our clan. You are of the priest. We know who you are. How dare you stand in our workplace, the temple, and preach what you're preaching? Now, you got to remember, Jeremiah was a sinner. Jeremiah, I guarantee, as he grew up as a boy, he did things he wasn't supposed to. And everybody knew, and Mama knew, and Dad knew. I don't know if he was a good boy, I don't know if he was a bad boy. The law stated if he was a wicked boy, he would have been killed, and he wasn't killed, so he wasn't wicked. But we all as children do things. We all as children have not honored our parents. But Jesus Christ, who is God, who is holy, who was 100% man, 100% God, never did anything wrong. And his own hometown rejected him. Who was the chief governor of the house of the Lord. So here is somebody important. Ooh. You say, okay. Have you not read what has been going on in 19 chapters? 
Have you not read all the false idolatry, the false worship, the Baal, and the altars, and the groves, and all the things that's going on in the house of the Lord? Have you not read that God's not happy with the house of the Lord? And you get these preachers, we welcome you to the house of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, God ain't happy. Revelation chapter 3. Heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. And, and like I said, Jeremiah was street preaching at the gates of the temple. Jeremiah has been in the valley of the, of, of the son of Hinnom. Jeremiah has been in many places preaching without a building. Except for the Lord's house. And then Pastor smoked Jeremiah the prophet. Bowed up and bashed. Now I'm going to say one thing. I, I thank God. Because I don't know how I would take it. I've never had anybody punch me. I've never had anybody smite me. I've never been hit in my street preaching. Now I've had a time where a woman came up and grabbed my, my amplification system started pulling the wires. I've had people throw beats at us. But I've never been smitten. Now, I don't know how much Jeremiah knew passion, passion knew Jeremiah, but he comes up, bam! And I know street preachers, and I've read biblical history. I've known there have been cases where there have been street preachers. They've been hit. I've learned of places where there have been street preachers and a gun has been pulled on. And if you want to read about things like that, read about Billy Sunday. And put him in stocks. Now stocks is... It's handcuffs. It's foot cuffs. He's locked them up. And if you ever seen the old picture where you got this wooden thing, I don't know if this is the wooden thing they're talking about, but you would put the head and the hands in it, and then you would close it. I don't know if it's those kinds of stuff. But he has put Jeremiah in arrest, in bondage. That were in the high gate of Benjamin. Which is by the house of the Lord. Everybody see Jeremiah look at him. I put him under control. I put him in bond. I arrested Jeremiah. And it came to pass on the morrow. The morrow. The next day. That Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stock. And then said unto Jer said and then Jeremiah said unto him, The Lord has not called thy name Pasha, but Magar Masabit. And that means a fear or terror on all sides. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror. There it is. That's part of the name, terror. To thyself, to all thy friends. So here is a terror to everybody around him. And you got to wonder if, if Patrick's friends were something, were also maybe Jeremiah's friends at one time. Is Patrick's, some of his friends, standing there listening to this? You see, when I read the Bible and I look and study at the Bible, where I don't, maybe Pastor's not standing there all by himself. Maybe Pastor's called a couple of his buddies, oh, hey, watch me with Jeremiah. <laughs> and then Jeremiah speaks up. They shall fall by the sword of their enemies, would be Babylon. <clears throat> and thy eyes, thy eyes, you, Pastor shall behold it. You're going to watch your friends fall. You know what's going to happen? According to the word of God, you know what happens What God says? Pasher will watch his friends fall by the sword of the Babylonians. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. It will happen. He shall carry them captive to Babylon. It will happen. 
and shall slay them with the sword. It will happen. Now remember, as Jeremiah is writing, Jeremiah has not done, you know, chapter 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30. Jeremiah has not lived. We have read, I hope, well, I hope you have read it. And when you come to the conclusion, you come to Jeremiah 52, and you come into Lamentations, wow! This, Jeremiah doesn't know that yet. That when Jeremiah is going to be in prison, and that city is taken captive, and he's sitting there, he's brought out of prison by the Babylonian, and the Babylonian captain gives Jeremiah a lecture. And Jeremiah's like, that's what I told him. He realized when he's talking with that Babylonian, I told them that. Are you telling me as a Gentile, you understood? Yeah. It's remarkable. Moreover, I will, God will, will, God will, deliver all the strength of this city, military, money, kings, royalty, all the labors thereof, the vineyards, the orchards, the oil, the wine, the crops, the shepherds, all the precious things thereof, the gold, the silver, all the treasures of the king of Judah will I give in the hand of their head. You remember, uh, man, I can't remember his name now. The king that, that, that had the boil, he was going to die. He, 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 he turned and wept before God and pleaded before God. God told Isaiah, turn around and tell us, I'm going to give him 15 more years. And he said, what will be the sign? And the sundial went back 10 degrees. And that brought the Babylonians. And my name, I'm sorry, my name, my names are terrible. And, and the sign came, the sundial went back 10 degrees. And the next thing that happens, the Babylonians show up to this king. I know it's not Hezekiah, but I got Hezekiah in my head. And the king is showing the Babylonian. Isaiah walks up to him and goes, well, who, who was that? That's the Babylonians. He said, well, what did you show them? I showed them everything. I showed them the house of the Lord. I showed them my house. I showed them all our treasures. I and Isaiah says, well, listen, listen, listen. It's coming a day that, that Babylon, everything you told Babylon, it's going to come, it's going to go. And I have a message when it when it when it comes to that particular part of the Bible. My message was and is shopping list. They recorded everything that king showed them, and never Nebuchadnezzar comes up and finds a whoa. And make sure you when you go to Jerusalem, you get my shopping list. And Jeremiah is bringing that shopping list up now. Everything. I will give in hand enemies which shall spoil them. That means take, rob, take from the dead bodies, and take them and carry them to Babylon. It's funny when you, a lot of the swords you find today, them swords were taken by the soldiers in Korea, in Vietnam, in World War II. They were souvenirs. There are guns today that are in people's collections. Because in World War II, when they stripped the slant, hey, I got myself. When you find a, a German gun that's in the hands of somebody, if it's World War II, that guy got it from a dead soldier that died on the battlefield. And thou, Pasher, if you want to say his name, and all that dwell in thy house, <laughs> his family. Now, you got you to ask yourself, remember, the priest. How close does Jeremiah and Pastor are? Now, maybe they're far away. Maybe they're complete strangers. I don't know. But what if they do know each other? This is a priest. Jeremiah is a priest. Jeremiah is sick and tired of what's going on. We've seen Jeremiah. This Lord, kill him. Take care of him. Lord, get him. Strike him dead. You see what they want to do to me? 
But we're going to see that play again in this chapter. And thou shalt come to Babylon. Oh, look at that. Pasture ends up in Babylon. And there shalt thou die. He doesn't come back to the rebuilding. And shalt be buried there. Thou and all thy friends. To whom thou hast prophesied <coughs> lies. So Pasture is a false prophet. Who is a priest. Don't you think just because they are of God, they are the priests of God, they're doing right? No. I don't care. I don't care. Listen, Eli's sons were priests and weren't doing right. And they, well, and listen, I, I don't care about the, we know the Catholics are wrong. We know that the Lutherans are wrong. They just, they just nominate a woman to be ahead of the Lutherans. Ridiculous. They don't know their Bible. I don't care what the charismatic. Listen, in my title, I care a little bit about the Methodists. And I'll tell you, I'm a born again, Bible believing, old time Methodist, born again, Christian Baptist. <laughs> okay, if you want to ask me who I am, what I am. So I look at the Baptists and I look to the Methodists. You know, the Methodists were a lot better than the Baptists at one time. And the Baptists at one time, many don't even know, were called separatists. So I will look at Jeremiah and the Baptist church. Don't think just because it's a Baptist church. Don't think just because it's a Bible Baptist church. Don't think just because it's a King James church. Don't think because they're just Baptist that that pastor, that behind that pulpit, that Sunday school teacher, and those elders, and those deacons of that church. Don't you think just because they're in that authority, they are doing what God wants them to do. Absolutely correctly wrong because... 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul tells us that there are ministers of Satan. And I believe, those say, I have sat under some of those ministers of Satan. See, a lot of people think wrongly, oh, he's in the pulpit, he opens up a Bible, he's got to be correct. No, check them out. Oh, Lord. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah, I don't know wh where he is now. Oh, Lord, that's a paragraph mark. I'm sure I can see my Bible has paragraph mark. I don't. I have not had a Bible, my Bible, to give me paragraph mark. Oh, Lord, oh, Jehovah, oh, Testament, oh, Jehovah, thou hast deceived me. <laughs> That's Jeremiah talking to God. Jeremiah is mad. Jeremiah may not be bitter, but he's there. <laughs> you know what? I've been where Jeremiah has been. A few times. Read on. Listen, he was just smitten. He was just put in stocks. He will go to jail. He has been despised and rejected of men like Jesus. Do you think Jeremiah can walk into whatever duties Jeremiah had in the temple? And I don't know what they were. But do you think Jeremiah could walk in that temple and start doing his duties anymore? No. He has been displaced. He's been ostracized. His family, his own hometown, wants him dead. And he wants his own hometown dead. Now he looks to God. I've done this. I have been rejected by family. I have been rejected by friends. I have been rejected by Christians. I have been rejected by the world. I have been rejected by churches. I have been rejected by pastors. I have been rejected by, by deacons. I have been rejected by the people I meet on the streets. I have been rejected by trustees, whatever office that is. I am rejected by the vendors at the farmer's market. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have I been? Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? That was written to Christians. That was written to a church. And marvel not if the world hates you. 
And there are preachers come up, well, you ought not to be saying that stuff. You ought not to be feeling that stuff. And you know what? They don't have anybody that hates them. Because they preach love. They preach care. They are carefully to wear bunny slippers of Easter when they preach their messages. They won't put combat boots on when they go into ministry. When I go into my ministry, man, I'm wearing combat boots. I got knee pads. I, I, I got the, the whole armor of God. When I got the whole armor of God, the sword that went out and sold the seed, the devil's there. And the devil will get his troops to come in, and the devil will get Christians. You attack that man. You make that man. You put him down. Now, I've been accused of anything but everything under this throne. I got a guy that comes up to me. He can't say nothing more. You're a fat son. You glutton pig. Is that the best you can do? This is Jeremiah. And there are things. The Bible says about Jesus. There are many other things that have been, that have been that cannot be that has happened that's not recorded. There's a lot of things that's going on in Jeremiah that's not recorded. I guarantee when Jeremiah is preaching at the temple, when Jeremiah is preaching at, at the valley of, of Hanan, where Jeremiah is preaching, I guarantee there's somebody in the background, that's not what, well, you can't say what Jesus, that's not what Jehovah would do. Jeremiah, you're turning people away from the temple. Why don't you just shut up and go home? We don't want to hear it. Every single week, Jeremiah, you're here. You say, where are you getting that stuff, Stiley? That's what they say to me. You know, I had a vendor come up to me and very angry, hated what I do, hate what I stand. He said, every single week you're here. I said, you telling me that you're angry because I'm faithful? I said, by the way, I haven't been here for a month because I've been in the hospital. Well, it seems like you were here. <laughs> well, amen. Amen. Thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. <laughs> you know what some of your, your 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 bunny slipper preachers at the Baptist pulpits would say? How dare you, Jeremiah? Yeah, because they don't have people mad at them. The worst thing they would get mad is when they get a visitor come to church. Oh, he's preaching about money. Thou art stronger than I. It's true. You don't want to mess with God. And has prevailed. I am in derision. That means an act of laughing and contempt. Scorning. Daily. They are laughing at me. They are scorning me. They are hating me. They can't stand me. Daily. That's why Jeremiah is upset. And I can think of at least one preacher, one pastor right now, they don't get mad at him. And I can think of others. I can think of a TV, bright, shiny, toothy guy with all the rich. They don't get mad at him. He's not doing right. What's the Bible say? Marvel not if the world hates you. Jesus said, know that the world hated me before he hated you. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, since I've been talking the word of God, I cried out. You know, you know, you know what the police say when they come to me? No, no, it's not the, the police are doing their job. We get caught. You're too loud. There it is. Jeremiah, I cried out, lift up that voice like a trumpet, and declare the iniquity to my people, Isaiah. God gave me a loud voice. And allegedly, I got one man, allegedly, you know, I, I, he's lying, allegedly lying. Oh, I could hear you over Daytona. No, you, I'm not that loud. I wish I was. I cried violence and spoil. What? The army's coming. They're going to spoil. The, the city is going to burn. You're going to die. You're going to be for the birds. You're going to be for the bee. That's, that's violence. 
Look what Jeremiah is calling God's judgment. God, you're bringing a bunch of violence. That's what he's saying to God. And it's a judgment. The violence is what's hap what's what the people are doing. Now, God doesn't do violence. God does judgment. And God does evil. He doesn't sin. And spoil. They're going to take everything. He just preached. He just told. What's that idiot's name? Passion. Your friend, they're going to take all your gold, all your silver, all your riches. That's a spoil. Because the word of the Lord, there it is, was made a reproach unto me. And it's funny because when you look up that word reproach, we'll look it up in Webster's 1828 dictionary. We don't do in the Greek. It's a content. It's to charge with fault severe language. They are not treating Jeremiah correctly. He's not being invited to the pastor's fellowship. They are telling him, we're going to have a fellowship, you stay home. We're going to have a family reunion, you don't come. I've had to, I've had the family get together. And I get no invites. I don't care. I'm going to serve the Lord. And a derision. We've already looked at that word. Laughing. Scorning. Daily. Daily. Jeremiah's complaint is every single day, Lord. Because of your word. Because of your word. I go to the store. And they... They, they, the manager comes up to me. You can't do that. You can't talk about, you can't pass out those papers. Well, why? You're trying to, to promote this network, children's network. i got to walk by your employees trying to sell me your junk. Around Tamu's day, i got to listen to bell ringing and then trying to extort money for Tamu's. Where their organization is going far and far and farther where no man's gone before of what William Booth used to do. You know why they allow the bell ringers at Tamu's time? Because they think because God will like me because we, we, we give charity. We allow charity, and we allow this religious organization to stand at our front door, so God will allow us to... Why should I allow you to... Because I let them ring the bells. So they can get money to feed poor people, but not give them the gospel. Every one of those bell ringers, I've gone up and said, What's salvation mean? They have no idea. I was, hey, hey, can you tell me about Mr. Booth? Oh, I don't, I don't, he may be another. He may be another uh, uh, place. No, yeah, he's another place. He's in glory right now. And I end up getting gospel tracts. I end up telling him about Jesus. Now watch this. Then, then I said, I've been here too. I will not make mention of him. Who's the him? God. God. That's it. I'm done. I am not speaking about. I'm done. I'm sick. Bye. Do you see how angry Jeremiah is? Bye. Out of here. Don't talk to me, God. Because I ain't going to talk to you. I'm done. That. Zip. <laughs> Any more in his name. I am not speaking Jehovah. I am not speaking Lord. I'm. <laughs> But, but, his word was in my heart. In my heart there rings a melody. Not Jeremiah. In my heart I want to speak about Jehovah, but I, I want to preach the word. I ain't. Jesus, no. Well, you can't say Jesus, wasn't you? Jehovah said, no. I'm not saying, no, no. Tell them, no. Oh, they're going to, oh, done. 
thing, not doing nothing. A burning fire. He had a biblical heartburn. He went to the doctor. He said, oh, man, my chest hurts. I'm having a heart attack. Oh, you're not having a heart attack. Oh, it must be acid reflux. No, it's not acid reflux either. What is it? It's the Holy Spirit telling you better talk. A fire shut up in my bone. Notice the word shut up. That means don't say nothing. You know, words people don't like, don't say shut up. Shut up! You want to get somebody mad in the street when you're preaching, they come up to you and they start, shut up! Ugh. Judge not these shit. You're judging me, so shut up. Say, so Stiley, you're cruel. Yeah, that's right. I'm a Jeremiah. Only thing, I want to be married again. Jeremiah has no wife. Jeremiah goes home to an empty house. I had wives in my ministry. But we get in the car, we have a wonderful day. Talking about a wonderful day we had in the streets. Not Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I'm not speaking. I'm not having nothing. And he was in his bones. For I was weary. And in a weary land. And forbearing, I stopped. I would not. And I could not stay. I could not stop. He'd be sitting there, uh, uh, he'd go, there'd be people's, you know, Jehovah's going to, he's going to get this place. I didn't mean to say, I'm sorry. You know, you better get, you may not be going to that bail altar. Because that bail is going to be nothing. You realize what's going to happen is God, I said I'm not going to, I'm not going to yeah, you're doing a very good job of not talking. You know, you know what the main problem I see with Christians today? They don't talk. They don't say nothing. Well, I'm saying, all right, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. If you don't speak about Jesus, if you don't think about what God's done for you, I question your soul. I question your new birth. And I am so questioned. You know, it's so funny. I was in a church, and he calls up the people. This person or these people receive Jesus as their seed. Why can't they say it themselves? If you can't talk it, I doubt you got it. Now, that ain't no wrong. But with the heart, man believes unto righteous. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. They seem to go together. All the godly men and women in the Bible, I see, they kept their mouth open. For I heard the defaming. That's another interesting word, the famine. We'll look up in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. No Hebrew Greek. A slander, a dishonor, injured by evil report. I, I heard the rumors. And I've had plenty of churches speak rumors of me. I've heard many lies. And I can imagine the churches I've left. I can imagine when people go, to, hey, what happened to the Haywards? I guarantee there was the thing. I guarantee there was slander. I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, said they. And we will report. Tell us, Jeremiah. Tell us what the Bible said. Now here comes that preacher. He's going to tell us about Jesus. He's going to preach about hell. You know, what the, you know what the people at the farmer's market know what I'm going to say every week? You know they knew what Jeremiah was going to say? Do you know that there are preachers? You know what they're going to say. You know what that message is going to be on Father's Day. You know what that message is going to be about Mother's Day. And they even got a calendar 
of events. And this Sunday, I always preach about this. The Catholic Church in uh, there's another church I forget what it is. I don't know about other, but they actually have on their calendars dated what the clergy is going to say and do on that particular Sunday or whatever. The messages are already laid out. When when Jeremiah is on the street, he's preaching destruction, come and repent. When I'm on the street, I am preaching heaven and hell and repent and the, the glories of Jesus and the and the tragedies of the devil. And there are some preachers that you hit, they just get fluffy, you know, bunny slippers of Easter, wearing stockings of Tammuz Day. That's something new I've been saying. I just started saying I like it. All my familiars. Do you see a word in that? Recognize familiars. You see an interesting word in that familiar? We'll look it up at Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, oh, here we go. But well, we can't. It's not 1828 Dictionary. But familiars in right. Bible word book. Intimate friends. You also see a word in that? You see the word family? Jeremiah's intimate friends and family members. There it is. Watched for my halting. They wanted one of these days Jeremiah's going to stop. It won't last. Mom, Dad, I'm a Christian. Uncles, aunts, I'm a Christian. Cousins, I'm a... It won't last. In a few years, you'll be back to us. There it is. There's a biblical account. He'll be back. It won't last. His family and his intimate friends, it won't last. Saying. Now, this is what his family and intimate friends are saying. Her venture... He will be enticed. And we shall prevail again. We will capture him. And we will. Conquer him. We will destroy Jeremiah. That's what they were trying to do with Jesus. They were trying to catch Jesus at his word. They were trying to, will he heal on the Sabbath? Yes, he will. We got false witnesses against him and they couldn't even agree with each other. His own intimate and family was plotting against Jeremiah so they can conquer him. So they can say, ah, because of that, we don't have to listen to Jeremiah. Ah, because of that, we don't have to listen to Jesus. It's called getting an excuse. They say, I got one guy at the front. Well, you know, you're a glutton, so I don't have to listen. And we shall take our revenge on him. What revenge? You know what Jeremiah is doing to our family? You know what Jeremiah is doing to, to our, our position of the temple? You know what Jeremiah is doing for our city? You know Jeremiah is scaring business away? You know people <laughs> can't go to the family reunion without, yeah, you know your friend Jeremiah, you know your uncle Jeremiah, you know your son Jeremiah. I've been there. And sadly, many preachers have not. But the Lord is with me a mighty, terrible one. You know what Jeremiah just did, though? Jeremiah was completely honest with God. I, I've been honest with God. I have said things to God I wouldn't tell anybody. I have been angry with God. I, 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 God... God sits up in heaven and looks like, hey, go ahead, you little piece of 
making it clay. You're my son. It's okay. Have your little pity party argument, but... But God wants honesty because, listen, if it's in your heart and you go up to God acting like everything's okay, God knows your heart. Therefore, my persecute, my persecutors shall stumble. I'm going to win, Jeremiah said. They won't win. I will. And he does. They shall not prevail. Jeremiah is going to come out of prison well. Like Joseph. Like Paul. You say Paul came out of prison and lost his head. Yeah, he's in glory today. They shall be greatly ashamed in Babylon. They shall not prosper. True. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But O Lord of hosts, all his creation that tries the righteous. He, God gives us things in our life to say, all right, let's see how you're going to do. I, many times I fail. And seeth the reins of the heart. What guides your heart? I've been time since December 2009, I, I have been times with God say, I quit. I'm done. I'm finished. And I haven't quit. I am not finished. But I'm telling you, the world can frustrate you. But I'll tell you, that there's nothing more for me, for me, for me. And I get sick and tired of Christians and pastors and churches that give me the hard time. I expect it from the world. I've got a man, he's, and he'll come up to me, and you, you ask my daughter, I don't believe in Jesus, I'm not I'm not religious, I, I don't have anything to do, but man, I respect that man for the Constitution right that he has the freedom to speak. That man has been more supported for me in the ministry then Christian and churches have been supported. I had a preacher come up. Well, I'm going to support you. We're going to help you out. We're going to get the church. You ask my daughter. We'll get the church. We'll, we'll get people to help you out. Lies. 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 And that's what tears me down. It was those words and those actions that it brought me to a point in my life. I was ready. To, I want to go home. That's it, Lord. I'm done. I quit. Tired of it. And I, I, I go to the street ministry. And I get people are lost. And I go, Lord God, will you, will you get them saved? Lord, they don't know what they're saying. They don't know what they're doing. They need to be saved. They need the Holy Spirit. They don't understand. And then I get Christians. <laughs> sing unto the Lord. You know, it's hard to sing unto the Lord when, when you're upset with the Lord. You know, it's hard to sing to the Lord when you're sad in the Lord. And the Bible says, rejoice evermore, even when, even when, when I, when I saw that singing on the Lord, I woke up sad this morning. And I said, I saw that sing on the Lord, and, I, and we came to rejoice every morning. I said, Lord, that's hard. Because I'm not feeling well. Lord, I know you're going to take care of me. Just when and how are you going to do it? And the Lord has just answered prayers after prayers. And, and, and extraordinary. I'd even pray for that today. Praise ye the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evildoers. The rich will get rich and richer, 
And those of a power authority will get more powerful, more authority in this world. Not in the afterlife. Her, oh, here we go, here we go. Ready? Before we do 2014. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Curse it be the day when I was born. You get that? You know, Job said the same thing. You know that the baker was killed on a birthday? Do you know John the Baptist was beheaded on a birthday? You know that man that is born into sin and born into troubles as the, star, as the sparks fly upward? And churches will, happy birthday to you. everybody this month. You have a birthday. Please stand up so we can lift you up and not God. I read the other day, coming out of uh, Second uh, Kings, on this month, and on this date, and in this year, Nebuchadnezzar came and carried Judah away captive. And on this date, of this year, they celebrated the Passover. And on this day, of this month, and this year, Moses erected the tabernacle. And on this, when this king was this amount of years old, then this king came into authority. And David ser served as king 40 years, 33 and a half years. In seven years. And not one place from Genesis to Revelation do we or have we the birth date of Jesus Christ. And we read the other day that, you know, they don't listen to the word. And there are churches that will have happy birthday, Jesus. And some churches will have the, well, we know is not the birthday of Jesus. No, it's the birthday of Tamar. And that the Christian, today, we have an event called the new birth. My new birth was April 25th, 1987. My daughter's was September of 2010. Why don't Baptist churches sing happy birthday on the day that you were born again you were made a child of God, adopted by the child of God through Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit dwelt in you. You became saved. Your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Why don't you celebrate that? All, all who were born again in June, will you rise up and let's praise the Lord Jesus? You know what? You know what one pastor said to me. Because many people don't remember that day. I said, Pastor. He goes, Yes. I said, when somebody gets saved and God allows me to be there, that moment they get saved, I tell them right off the you write this date down in your Bible. Have you ever told anybody, you all the people you got saved, you ever told them write that, that date down in the Bible? No. Never thought of it. Well, I know where your heart is. I know where your fruit is. And then some of the people that you say get saved, I don't believe they get saved. Cursed be the day I was born. Yes. I, I agree with you, Jeremiah. I agree with you, Joe. I wouldn't have the problems I have today if I wasn't born. I would not have been need to be born again. Let not the day where my mother bear me be blessed. Happy. You know, Asher. Please, Asher. That means blessing. Leah said, oh, boy. It was a boy. Call him blessed. Everybody shall, shall be happy. Curse it. Be the man. Curse it. 
You know the first time the word curse shows up in the Bible? Adam, that ground is cursed. Curse it be the man. I don't even think the woman got the curse. I'm trying to think about the serpent. Curse it be Genesis 3. Curse it be the day when I was born. Let not the day, birthday, birthday, see the born, see the day. You can't find birthday with a good condemnation of the Bible. You find birthday in the Bible, two men died. One was hanged, the other one that was beheaded. I saw the souls of them under the throne of God beheaded for the word of God. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Your son has been born. God said, Cursed be that person that brought my dad the news. Let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew. Empty, clean, nothing, destroyed, ruined, and repented not. Let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting of the new time. Death. Remember Egypt? Right after midnight, the cry that raised throughout the cities, out the houses. Because he, showed, he slew me not from the womb. He wanted to be a stillborn. Or that my mother might have been my grave. Stillborn. And her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth for the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame. Back to, back to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. That's why Jeremiah. But Jeremiah is better. I don't blame him. Because all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And you're going to get upset. You, listen, even Paul. Paul said, you know what Paul said with all the persecution? You know what Paul said with all the problems from the Jews, from the Gentiles, from the churches? From the people that, that journey. You know what Paul said? Paul to be asking with the body present with the Lord. But it's needful for me to be here. Paul said, you know what? I'd just rather go home. You, you know what my life, you know what my life, you know what my life, Paul says? Oh, what I'm supposed to do, I do not. And what I'm not supposed to do, that I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. It sometimes gets very aggravating when you're serving the Lord properly. Because you think, shouldn't I be getting better treatment? And at that moment, learn, learn, and study, and know Isaiah 53. And remember, Jesus Christ didn't get better treatment. He got the worst treatment. And then think, you know what? God has me in the same company of Jesus. I am in the same company of Paul. And Peter. A woman caused Elijah to have a nervous breakdown. Moses got upset all the time. And when a pastor comes up, you ought not to be saying that. You ought not to be thinking that. And I got to look at him like, oh, what kind of ministry do you have? 